Hey, what's up, everybody? Adam here. Today, I wanted to answer a question that came in in the uh, Landscape SketchUp Facebook group. And this has to do with this road that's sitting on this piece of terrain, this topography. And the question had to do with making the road smoother. And you can see that the road definitely is not smooth. And there's a bunch of bumps in through here. It's creating some shading errors. But we're going to talk about how to an alternative method to create this road. Just a little backstory. The terrain itself here was created with topo shaper using contour lines see the quad mesh here underneath and then the road was created with valley architects instant road plugin a couple things i'm not going to use the instant road plugin i do own it i don't have it installed personally i think it's great for some situations i'm not really a fan of the geometry that it produces but if you want to use the the instant road one suggestion would be when you make the terrain itself and you do the topo shaper operation to increase the grid resolution i think the default is 50 by 50 i maybe go up to you know two three four hundred something like that because i think a lot of what is happening in here has to do with kind of these points from the the grid on on topo shaper being too large now it takes longer it can slow down the model there's a lot of downsides to actually doing that another option would be to just subdivide the area that you're going to work on and we could do that here let's go into top view parallel projection i'm going to get into our terrain mesh here and bring back the rest of the model and what i want to do is just select some verts on either side of this and i can do that a couple ways with artisan it's pretty easy with the select brush we could get in here let's make this a little bit bigger our terrain here or follow our road excuse me something like that if you have the new sketch plus set of tools there's also a polygonal option or vertex tools you could also use a polygonal select and come and select all this area around there what we're going to do is let me just select another little piece here that make sure that we have some good distance on either side and then with artisan there's an option here called subdivide selection we would do that and that would subdivide this so that we're not adding a ton of polygons to it outside of the area where we need them to be that's another option what you can also do after you subdivide is use this button here which is smooth selection and you'll see what happens there that that just will smooth out just that area in through there and then you can just obviously grab your material drop that on there and now we've just smoothed and, and added some division in that area the way that i would probably do this i'm going to use vertex tools now it is a paid plugin difficult to do this without something like vertex text tools because of how it works at and it'll maintain the slope let me show you what i mean we're going to take our road profile use the drape tool let's drape it down onto our surface and what this is going to do is just fence around polygons or the vertices that we want to work on with vertex tools and now we should be able to get in here and just select inside of that and let's double click the surface and the border edges and then let's call vertex tools now what you see here is a little bit of soft selection that I have around the selected vertices. And what that will do is essentially we're going to apply a make planar operation. Let me turn off soft selection, go back to zero. You can see now we only have red dots in here. Make planar is this button here in the edit toolbar for vertex tools too. We're going to click that and we'll see that this will make this planar, but it'll smooth everything across. A, a lot of make planar options will make things completely flat, but just flattens or it'll move things all up to one height. What's nice with vertex tools is it, it will make planar, but it will keep our slope at the same time. You can see though that we, we still have a little bit of some jaggedness in through here. So that's where we can undo this. And now we can turn on our soft selection. And if we increase that up to, I don't know, maybe something like 20 feet, we can just type in a measurement. And now you can see that when we make planar, it's going to happen 100% where it's red and then trail off based on our fall off that we choose over here. We have cosine and this is going to trail off to zero. The orange vertices, you know, might get 80%. The green might get 50 down to 30 and then it's going to trail to zero. So as it makes planar, it's going to average that out and that'll smooth things out. But let's just go ahead and make planar again. And you'll see that we will not have those bumps there on either side. And you can see how that kind of grades things a little bit nicer there. 
All right, so that's kind of the easy way. If you wanted to throw on just a, a seamless texture, asphalt, gravel, something like that, that would be the way to go about it using vertex tools. What if we wanted to do a road material that had painted markings on it? Well, that's where it gets a little bit trickier. The one thing I, I should have mentioned here, especially when we talk about Valley Architects plugins, is that this road shape isn't uh, equal width throughout the entire length of the path. If we look at it, we can see that it gets narrowing, gets wider, gets nar more narrow. It changes width. With Valley Architects, you know, you have the option to make a road from center line or make the road from profile. You have to go from profile, which limits some of the options as well. This also presents itself to be very tricky when it comes to doing quad face mapping because we can't properly just offset our edge in order to get our perfect grid um, as we do our quad face mapping for those road markings to follow perfectly. Our vertices aren't going to line up as if they were offset. And I know that might sound a little bit confusing, but I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let me actually just undo and get back. The one thing I want to do, if I am planning ahead for proper uh, UV mapping, so I would first of all get in and let's just offset this as it is. And you can adjust your edges first if you want. I'm just going to do this quickly. Let's do five feet. I'm going to select all, select only border edges. Let's cut them, get out of the group, paste in place, and then we're going to drape them down over to our, our terrain. What this is going to do is create a landing pad, if you will, for our quad face road once we do that. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let's go ahead and drape those edges in there. I would personally probably have cleaned up my path first and cleaned up the the curves or the splines or whatever you want to call them and just kind of evened out the vertices and the distribution. So there we go. Now we've widened this by five feet on either side. You can see we can't select the path now. What we're going to do is inspect edge gaps with edge tools. Just make sure there's no gaps. There was one. Now we should be able to select it. Double click. Call vertex tools with our soft selection still on. And let's go make planar. This is just a five foot shoulder essentially on either side of the road. There we go. I could group this and I'll show you why in a second. Let me get out of our main group. I'm going to come up here. I'm going to paste that in here. Now, this is going to be basically the landing pad, which I'm going to drop this down on. Um, but I first need to get this to be proper quads so that I can texture it. So let's get inside here, hide everything else. I'm going to delete that edge. I'm going to delete this edge. Now, what we need to do is try to distribute the vertices across in a way that makes sense for quad mapping. So what that means is basically we want our grid that we're going to, going to create to be sitting as perpendicular to the edge normals as possible, which means 90 degrees from the outside edges. We want any of our grid here, either perfectly perpendicular or parallel and not perfectly, but as close as we can possibly get it. A little bit challenging when we're gonna be using curvy loft here or either curvy loft, or we could do this with split tools and quad face tools. Now, the way this is sitting, this is a curve made up of 519. This one's made up of 1,026. You can see there's a difference in our segment count on both sides. The first thing I'm going to do is simplify these curves. I'm going to go to edge tools, simplify selected curves. We're going to drop this down to maybe 0.5 or let's do 0.4 and that reduced by a thousand edges. And I'm just going to look at these here and you can see that it kind of reduced it in the straight areas. It left us with a little more here as we're coming around each curve. And now what I'm going to do is get in. Let's go to either BZ convert to and we could divide this with polyline divider for animation or I'm going to use the newer Frito spline. We're going to convert this to let's do polyline divider and let's divide it by let's do four feet. Let's do 48 inches and let's do the same thing with this one. If you wanted to use BZ, uh, the Bezier tools, Bezier spline plugin, you do get the BZ convert to polyline divider for animation option. And then you could set the max length to four feet and that would do the same thing. But I'm going to use Frito spline. We're going to do polyline divider. And that way I can make sure that we're adjusted at the same point. Again, let's go 48. So if I get a, got in here and measured from our vertice to the end, if we measured from here, that is four feet and that is four feet. 
All right, so if I would close this one and close this one, and let's just make that into a face here. And now if we would run split tools, we can let's do split sausage and everything looks good as it's coming up, coming up, and then starts to lose it as it comes up here, where you can tell in through here, we're no longer perpendicular. And then as we come around this curve, what that would do was really tweak our texture, essentially, as we're coming up through here. Same, same with up through here. So there is kind of a long-handed workaround to this. If there was a plugin that would allow us to do intersection only at the edge where the edge intersects, this would be a really quick solution. But as far as I know, nothing like that exists. But let me show you the difference here. If we would offset this like so, right? And now we just had these edges that an offset version now we would run split sausage and you can see that it's doing what it's supposed to do which is turning as it's coming around here this is what we want but you can see that the other set of edges doesn't follow th this offset edge it's varying width the one thing we could do is grab our edge here i'm just going to use extrusion extrude edges by vector we're going to do it that way that way it'll keep it in a group let's say no say no let's lift this up and we're just going to use this to intersect but here's the problem all of our individual pieces here are going to intersect and create extra vertices in here we're going to lose our quad mapping the only way to, to have and that's what i was saying if there was a plugin that would intersect only where it crosses the edge and then connect those that would be ideal for quad mapping in a situation like this the workaround for this would be to get in and just select an edge go to select quad face loops and now i'm going to use selection toys to select the faces and i'm going to delete them now there are no faces is. let me grab this guy's in a group and explode this and now what i want to do is intersect this piece with context look and you can see all of those vertices where we broke then from there let's mark them with um, frito tools mark vertices and that basically will paint put a guide point at every place we have an endpoint what we're going to want to do is create a connecting line through all of these guide points in the middle Okay, so we could either get in and delete this bit here on the end that we don't need. And then I'll show you a way to connect. I'm gonna use lasso select here from sketch plus. Uh, we could also do this with vertex tools and we need to select also connected our bounding edges. That won't work because there's no face. Let me just grow selection with quad face tools and then i should be able to just go ahead and delete that let's go back to our polygonal select and then let's hit delete there we go all right so now we have our grid lined up the way that it should now all we have to do is get in and connect these endpoints and we're going to use a plugin by sam mitch called connect c points i want to do the same thing I'm just going to get in here and see maybe i can zoom out and do this Obviously, this is a kind of a complex path. You know, something that wasn't as complex would be a little quicker, obviously, to select everything. Again, if this was not, if this was evenly distance as far as the width goes throughout the length of the path, if we didn't have variation in the width, we wouldn't have to do anything like this. But now we have all of our endpoints selected, and we're just going to use this plugin here from Sam Mitch. It's in the JHS power bar. It's this one right here. Connect C points. And just like that, we did it. So it does throw in an extra one here at the end. I'm just going to delete that. And now what we should be able to do, delete our guides, explode that lines, lines that the, the Sam Mitch plugin just created. And there we go. So I want to interrupt. Uh, I was just watching back the video in editing and it just kind of occurred to me that there's probably a faster way to deal with connecting those guide points. So I just wanted to kind of demonstrate that really quick. Um, you do the intersect here, right? So now we have all of our endpoints. And what I'm going to do is just select all. We're going to use Frito Tools Mark Vertices. I'm going to select all again. 
We're going to right click with selection toys and go to select only guide points right there. Just for demonstration, I'm going to group these and get inside the group. There we go. So now you can see all of the guide points in there. And we can just select all and then use SD Mitch's connect C points with line. And what this is going to do is it'll just connect all of our guide points. Still processing. There's there. It's done. I'm going to delete the guide points. I'm going to get in here. Oops. Get in here. And there's this extra edge. Just need to delete that. Right. So now really quick. Oh, we can delete. Just triple click. Delete that guy. And from here to here. Make our face. Let's try uh, split sausage. And there we go very quickly we got our results here that's a lot faster so i just wanted to interject with that thought now the only thing we have left to do let's make faces here and close everything back up just like so and now we have our grid lines following perfectly what i'm going to do is i am going to ring select here with quad face tools and then we are going to insert some loops let me actually insert a couple loops so maybe four so you could also do this with curvy loft and once you get that second set of edges select both of them run curvy loft it'll do the same thing now we have all of our edges in there to make up our grid which is going to support our quad face texturing i know it, it seems weird why would we do all this work well it has to do with deforming the text the one thing with curvy loft that you can do as well is just create a cage because now what we're going to have to do is delete the faces again. So let's go up, select everything, select only faces with selection toys, and let's delete just the faces. Sounds crazy, but trust me. All right. So now what I want to do is I'm going to drop this down onto our landing surface that we created. Remember, it was a five foot shoulder on every side. And now what I'm going to do is use a line endpoint. This is another plugin. We're going to drop this down on the Z to the nearest minus, which means it's going to go in the negative direction. We're going to hit OK. All right, so that's going to run. And what we created here is the landing pad. Every one of these endpoints in our cage that we just made is going to fall down. It's going to hit the landing pad. We're going to deform our entire road to the surface underneath. We're not going to break our quads. This is the whole reason for this is for the mapping. Once this gets down onto the surface, then we can rebuild the quads using quad face tools. And now we have a perfectly conformed quad based mesh that we can UV map properly to have our road surface follow. And you'll see that in a second. Let this finish. There we go. And you can see that that's sitting perfectly on our little landing area that we created. And then again, that landing area, remember, is sitting perfectly in our terrain. We do have a little bit of a shoulder here. What we're going to do is grab here. Let's just group it and get inside just so we can isolate it, select all. And now there's an option in quad face tools called convert wireframe to quads. We're going to run through, let that go. It doesn't take too long. 90. Oh, there we go. That's done. Uh, I think we double click or hit enter and that'll just go ahead and give us our quad mesh. Uh, you can see that we do have some backwards faces. We're going to use Frito Tools Reverse Orient Faces. We're going to make sure this is set to Orient and make sure all this button here is all connected. And then we're just going to click on a white face and that should reverse everything. I think you can, the new Orient Faces, that's actually better. Sorry. You could just do that natively in SketchUp now. Just click on a, a white face and go to Orient Faces. I keep forgetting that they added that function functionality natively. So there we we go there is our road that is not equal width that is now quad mesh ready for texturing and it's perfectly set up exactly like it would be if we just had an offset um, which is was ideal so all right long way around but we got there now i'm going to go grab a road texture and i'll show you how this looks i have one here that's fairly massive actually it's uh, 15,000 by 11,000 super high res but let's just use it for demonstration purposes and we can see how good this can actually look again you want to have enough subdivisions now when we did divide polyline divider we did it by four feet now that I'm looking at this it's a little bit segmented coming around some of these curves you might want to lower that to three feet it's going to take longer to process depending on how the distance that you're going to view this from this 
might be a little bit too jagged. How to, re how to remedy that is to add more segments and you do that by decreasing the width in your polyline divider operation. You would actually want to do it on this side here because that, that was the one that counted. Here's our material. Let's bump this up here. I'm going to say that's probably, I don't know, 36 feet or something across. Okay. So probably before I drop that in here, let's just grab everything and soften it. Now we're going to use through paint and we're going to use quad mesh UV quad mapping. And I have through paint two installed. It's this first button here, quad mesh UV. And we're going to set our face selection type to surface. Okay. And that's it. We can keep front and back turned on if you want. Since it's a huge texture, maybe I'll only put it on the front. I'm just going to go for it. And what we're going to do is get in here, just grab our first quad. I'm going to put the red axis going in this direction, the green in this direction, and I'm just going to click. That will go ahead and deform that texture around this entire road all the way top to bottom. So you can see we're getting a little bit of, again, that segmentation. That has to do with our initial polyline divider. But you could follow the way we did it and understand how to fix it. So I'm gonna move this over and I'm gonna click click on our white line since where it needs to be. And that way we'll pin the texture at that point and then we can scale from there either just in the red orientation or let's scale the whole thing down. Um, because I think that's really what we need to do. And we just wanna bring that yellow to the center. We're gonna see that other white line show up like so. And if you wanted to scale this in even further, once you get center, then you want to maybe click at the center that that stays kind of pinned. And you could scale just on the red if you wanted to bring in more of the shoulder. Whatever you want to do. This little choppiness here is just mirroring what our geometry is doing. But for the most part, probably these tighter curves, you're going to see a lot smoother as it's coming around. And you can, you can have complete control over that smoothing. Uh, I'm going to just double check that preferences, open GL, use maximum texture size is turned on. And let's close this. Actually, what I want to do is let me select all and then I'm going to use selection toys. Well, it's a surface. I can just double click, hold shift and deselect the face. I just want to grab the border edges. Let me copy those. And now we're going to get out and we'll get into our landing group here. I should be able to paste those border edges in and it should make a face because of how we drop those endpoints or the aligned the endpoints. Now we should be able to just delete that face and our road will sit in here perfectly. Soften our road back out and there we go. Now our road is sitting perfectly. Uh, it's nice and smooth. Texturing is on there. We have a little bit of a shoulder. You could probably get away with making this even smaller and going down to something like two or three feet. You just need enough for that, that uh, wire mesh that we created, the wireframe are supporting our texture mapping to be able to drop down and hit a landing pad. There's our completed road. I think it looks pretty good overall. If you wanted, you could also soften this edge here. Just basically get in here. Let's cut this. And now let's get in here. Let's paste that in there. And then obviously just soften this outer edge here to kind of help that smooth itself out with rendering and fix those smoothing groups like so. And now we would just double click out here and then let's soften and there you can see just like that goes away. And there's just our road. I hope that was helpful of an update on a tutorial I did a long time ago, which is this here. So how to conform a road to a terrain and texture it has uh, 135,000 views. I think it might even be the same texture, but an update on this initial video 
and how to do it with some of the new techniques and some of the new tools in a much more complex situation than we tackled here. This was a very simple deal where what we're doing here is a lot more complicated. Now, I could get into showing how to do curbs as well. Maybe in another video we can tackle that or sidewalks or something, um, but I'm gonna leave it here for now. Let me know if you guys have any other ideas as far as the workflow to, to tackle something like this. I can't really think of anything. I hope that was helpful as well, and I hope everybody has a great day. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.